When it comes to chemical reaction, there are five main types of chemical reactions we're going to address. There's combustion, decomposition, double replacement, which is also called double displacement, single replacement, also single displacement, and synthesis. Synthesis means to create something. You may have heard of photosynthesis, to create something from light. First one is combustion. You may have heard of burning before. Combustion can also be happen in things like rust and stuff like that. But you have some kind of fuel, reacts with oxygen, creates carbon dioxide and water. In the case of rust, things are a little bit different, but when it come comes to burning, fuel plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water. You may be confused because water puts out fire, but this case is water vapor, and there's not very much of it, generally speaking. Decomposition is when you have two things that are together that break apart. So I have an example here. A heart that's all together breaks into two pieces. Here we have two little colorful dots. They're stuck together. They break apart into two different pieces. Next is double replacement. That's when basically the molecules break apart and switch partners. So here we have a blue and an orange together and they break up and they are combined with a green and red. They break apart and you get blue and red plus orange and green. So we're do -si doing over here. In a double replacement reaction, you have two different items that are paired together and basically they come apart and switch partners. So I took those apart took these apart, and we're going to switch them up. So they basically just switch who they're in attached to. In a single replacement reaction, one of the reactants for bonds with part of one of the other reactants. An example of a single replacement reaction would be if I had two things that are bonded together and something by itself. In the chemical reaction, the things bonded together, that would break apart, and it would bond with the other reactant to form two different products. Now the blue is by itself, and the red is bonded with the green. Synthesis is pretty simple. You have one thing and another thing, put them together, and you get a combination. So let's say this is sodium and chlorine, putting them put together, sodium chloride, delicious. A decomposition reaction is the opposite of a synthesis reaction. It means you have two things bonded together, and they break apart into two smaller things. Coefficients tell us how many moles of each compound there are in our chemical formula. Remember, a mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. In this case, that mean, can mean atoms or molecules, usually molecules when it comes to chemical equations. And the coefficient just goes right in front. So let's do an example of using coefficients to balance our equation. Here I have H2O2, and it goes through reaction and turns into H2O in water. So if you're paying attention, you have a bigger thing that turns into two smaller things. That's a decomposition reaction. So I have on this side two H's, two oxygens. On this side, I have two hydrogens, hydrogens, yeah, not H's. And then I have one, two, three oxygens. So I want to balance this so out. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to balance out my chemical equation. And since I know that this is the odd number, I'm going to start with my water, okay? So let's try putting a 2 in front of my H2O. This 2 is a coefficient, okay? It tells me there are 2 of everything in this compound. So 2 times how many H's? So 2 times 2, that's 4. And 2 times how many oxygens? So 2 times 1 is 2, okay? So let's see, how have I changed this? How many H's do I have? I have 4 H's now, right? Because 2 times 2 is 4. Now I have 2 oxygens here and 2 here. So now I have 4 oxygens on this side. Now this is obviously not balanced yet. We have twice as many on this side as this side. Oh, but look, this right here, it's exactly half of this. And I happen to have the equal proportion over here. That's fancy. Let's see if a coefficient will go right there. What does that do? Okay, two times two is four. That's balanced, yay. Two times two is four. That's balanced, yay and my equation is balanced. Conservation of mass says that matter cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So that means when you have some kind of chemical reaction, nothing new is being created. It's just a recombination of things that were already there. So here's an example. I have two nitrogens, two hydrogens, and they combine to make NH3 or ammonia. Okay, so let's, let me balance this out. H, N, H. I have two nitrogens and two hydrogens, one and three. That's not balanced at all. So let's start with looking at my hydrogen. I'm like, well, I have two and three. Well, 
if I had a two here, that's going to turn that to four, and that's still not going to work, and it's going to be a big old mess. So what I'm thinking is, what number will both of these go into? And I'm also thinking, if I multiply them together, that would make six. I wonder if that would work. So let's see here. To make this into six, I'd have to put a two here. And to make this into six, I have to put a three here. So what does that do? On this side of my chemical equation, my reactants, now I have three times two, six hydrogens. And now on this side, I have two times one, because there's only one there. So two nitrogens and two times three, that's six. It's balanced, yay! Balancing reaction makes sense to a lot of people, but some people are more hands-on learners. So I'm going to use something delicious. We're going to balance with jelly beans. So let's say potassium is represented by a green jelly bean. And I have one potassium on each side. Now let's say my hydrogen is represented by a yellow jelly bean. Here I have two hydrogens. Here I have one hydrogen here and two here. Okay. And now I also need oxygen. So I'm going to make that a pink jelly bean. One and one. So now I can look at that and say, well, there's one green and one green. There are two yellows and there's one yellow and two yellows. And there's one pink and one pink. The only thing that's not balanced is my yellows. So the only thing uneven here is my hydrogen. Now, how am I going to make my hydrogen more even? How do I have the same number of each color of jelly beans? Well, let's see here. This is a molecule. This has to stay together. This is a molecule that has to stay together. And so is this. This is just potassium by itself. So let's see, maybe I can make another one of these molecules. Okay, here's pretty water. Now I have four and three. Well, maybe I can make another one of these molecules. So there's a green and a pink and a yellow. Now let's see here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Well, my yellows are all balanced out, but now my greens are unbalanced. Well, now my greens are balanced and I have two pinks. So it looks like everything's nice and balanced. So the way I'd write that, since I had two of these, I had a two as my coefficient. I had two waters. Two is my coefficient. Two KOHs, potassium hydroxide. And then I just get my one H2. So my now my equation is all balanced. And I have a delicious snack. Here I have another reaction. I have sodium and chlorine making sodium chloride. Yay for salt. Now I'm going to use purple. These look black on camera, but they're actually purple for my sodium. And then I'll use orange for my chlorine. And then I have sodium chloride, purple and orange. Okay, we'll mix that. There we go. Okay, so purple plus two oranges makes a purple and orange. Well, obviously this isn't even. We want to have the same number of purples on each side and the same number of oranges on each side. So that's not even. So let's try it. We need more oranges on this side, So let, but we can't just add orange for funsies. We have to add the whole molecule. So let's do that then. Okay, so now my oranges are even, but now my purples are uneven. So I need another purple. So now I have two of the sodiums. So I put two as the coefficient, plus still one chlorine molecule. And I have two sodium chloride molecules, so I put two as a coefficient there. This means two moles of sodium plus one mole of chlor chlorine as a molecule, Cl2, forms two moles of sodium chloride. It's combining, so it's a synthesis reaction. Coefficients tell us how many moles there are of whatever they're in front of. A coefficient tells us how many moles there are of each of the compounds.